Hello guys and welcome back to the gaming cupboard. I'm sorry it's been a few weeks since I put out a video. Um, a lot has happened in those couple of weeks as you can see. Um, I had some time off for a holiday for my birthday and when I got back I just started decorating this room so I've had absolutely nowhere to film. Um, but I managed to put some friggin shelves up which I said that I was going to do weeks and probably months ago now and um, while I was doing that I thought well I'll get this telly and I'll get some Kallax I'll just make quite a good job of it so I hope you like the new setup it's changed quite a bit from what it was before but really happy with the results so far and it's just nice to have somewhere to store and display some of the games I've got on my collection there's plenty more I need to find room for unfortunately but it's a damn good start and it's a step in the right direction anyway I've got because of that, I've got about three weeks worth of pickups to go through. Now, there's not an awful lot, but like I say, I've been all over the place. And the first place I went to while I was away, I spent some time up near York. So I went into the centre of York, had a look in their CEX, had a look around some charity shops and went into Sore Thumbs to kind of end off the day. And um, yeah, I've got a few bits from there, which I'll jump right into and share with you guys. So um, the first thing that I found when I was looking around the charity shops, in fact the only thing that I found when I was going around the charity shops was a game which I couldn't leave behind for a quid. It's one I've already got, but it's a fantastic game. It's not a console, it's a PC game and it is a Grim Fandango, which I picked up for a whole pound. Now this is a fantastic game. If you like your puzzle games, you like your LucasArts games, you really need to get this in your life. It's not the same as Monkey Island. It's not 2D, it's 3D. But the story is really good. It was really well executed as a game, um, as a 3D. And I highly recommend if you haven't got this, haven't played it, pick it up. I believe it's on the Nintendo Switch store. So if you can't find a copy on the PC or prefer to play it on a console, then you have that option as well. So yeah, really happy to get that for a pound in my collection. Next up, while I was there, I looked in CEX, which is considerably better than my store. They had so much in there, and so as a result, I ended up picking up loads of games and probably spending more than I wanted, which is unfortunate because I left all my my credit like um, receipts at home for CEX, so I had to actually pay cash for this, which is absolutely shocking. But there was so much stuff there that I thought, you know what, I'll get it anyway. Um, so the first thing I picked up from there, I'll show you, is Destroy All Humans, Big Willy Unleashed, or Unleash Your Big Willy as it says on the back. No euphemisms there to sell a game. <laughs> but yeah, complete with manual, £1.50 on the Wii. Such a good system to collect for, for the amount of games, and if you can pick them up for that, I mean... That's about what you pick them up by car boot yourself or when you can pick them up in CEX. That's fantastic. Really happy to have that in my collection. I think I've got the first one, though I haven't really given it a lot of time. But having a second one, like I'll get it eventually. But I've got the third one to go with it now, so I can complete the set. Um, and the next one I picked up, probably the cheapest Atlas game that you can buy at the moment with all the, the personas and the other ones out. But I first played this one. It's another Wii game, back when it was released in about 2006. This is a sequel to it. This is Trauma Center New Blood. So the same mode by Atlas Software. It's complete game and manual. And I really like the first one. It was a very unusual game. It's You play as a surgeon, the nunchuck and the remote are your tools. You can choose all kinds of tools to perform surgery on people. I think I got bored of the first one at the point where you had to defuse a bomb and you had to do it with your surgical tools and I just couldn't get past that bit. It was ridiculously hard and um, yeah, I just managed to fail it every time that I did. But yeah, it's a really, really cool little game to be honest, a surgery game and it really makes good use of the Wii controls. So I definitely recommend getting a copy of that. For two quid, absolutely, absolutely must have for the Wii. Um, where else did I get from there? So I went to get a copy of Boy and Blob on Wii, which is again, a game that I never see out and about in the wild. It's one that 
just has eluded me. I've never seen it, never seen it locally. And then CX at the moment is eight pounds. So I took the case up to the counter, it had manual in, I was very happy with that. I asked to look at the disc and it had big scones scratch marks straight across it. Not circular ones, but straight across it. So I was kind of like, ugh. They like, I put it through the cleaner. To be honest, they're really like considerate in there, the staff. They let me look at it. They had more than one copy of some of the other games I got to let me choose between them, which is really kind of above and beyond because I don't had that in a CX before, but that was the only copy. And because of the scratches, I said no and left it behind. Um, and now I can't find a copy. Now I can't find a copy through CX. The only stores that have it don't ship or they have it on eBay, but prices are a bit all over the place. So they're ranging from about 15 to 20 pounds. So people have proper chance in their arm with it, but I ain't gonna pay it. I'll wait until another copy comes up at CX or I find it, but really frustrating. But the money I saved from not buying that, I spent on a game the, from a series that I love, one I've been after for a while, Probably just saw it then. It's for the original Xbox and probably one of the more expensive titles, I would say, on the system. I got um, Morrowind Game of the Year Edition. Now, this has definitely been from a smoking household because it smells like it's been on fire at some point. But the game's in there. This is the map. Comes with a manual. There is a tab broken at the top there, but I can easily swap it out for some of the games I've got. And it's got the map, which is always the thing that's missing from these games when I get it, but absolutely reeks of smoke. Absolutely reeks of it. But yeah, if you're gonna play um, one of the old Elder Scroll games, then this, in my opinion, is the one to play. The Game of the Year edition has the Tribunal and the Blood Moon expansion packs, which really kind of bump up the storyline from the original one. So I definitely recommend picking this up if you have the means to do so. And if you don't want to pick it up on the console because it costs too much, it's just 25 quid on the Xbox, pick it up on the PC. You won't regret it. Definitely a great game. And is that going a bit dull? That's better. Right, so as well as that, which I nearly missed out, there were some SNES games in CX, which I don't really find that many SNES games out and about in CX. And when I do and they're a good price, I'll pick them up. So I've got two, I took a recommendation on this one um, from Russell the Retro Bear. I picked up Tiny Toons Buster Busts Loose, which is really easy to say. <laughs> and I got this for, I think it was for about four quid in CEX. Now four quid for a SNES game is really cheap anyway. So really happy to have picked this up. Um, for that price and it's a really good game. It's aged pretty well considering other SNES games um, The graphics on it still look pretty good. I'm really quite happy to have that And the last one I picked up from there was a game in a trilogy and I've got the other two on the SNES But I haven't got this one so this was sitting there. It's 15 quid and I was surprised actually because I expected this to be more than the second one was the second one is going for about £20 and this is going for 15 Normally, it's the last one in the trilogy or the latest, last one that's on there that goes some more because either at that point people are looking at the new consoles and they're bringing out the last Gasp games. But I was really surprised that this one was cheaper than the second one. And it is Donkey Kong Country 3, which is £15, I believe. Uh, Dixie Kong's Double Trouble. Now I have given it a quick go. I'll be honest, I didn't find the controls as good as on the second one, um, which is probably my favorite. Maybe that's why it goes some more. I think it really improved on the first one. But either way, regardless, really happy to have this in my collection. So that completes all the Donkey Kong games I have for the system now. Um, so yeah, that's my CEX bits I got from York. After that, I moved on to Sore Thumbs, had a look around there. It's a fantastic store um, to go there. Um, they have games piled high everywhere. I think they have tons out the back as well because I asked him if he had um, a game. He's like, I'm pretty sure we've got it in stock, but then at the front, it's gonna be out the back, piled high with everything else. And um, on as well as having kind of counters, they've got like tubs of games on the top. 
there's curtains and if you lift the curtains up there's stacks of games behind so I think what they do is they put the doubles behind and leave some out on top um, I didn't have an awful lot of time to look around in there I certainly could have spent a lot more time going around in there um, but I managed to just pick up a couple of original Xbox games that I was looking for um, which were four quid each so not too bad some pretty decent titles so continuing on from the other ones I've picked up so far in the Legacy of Kane series I picked up Blood Omen 2 for the original Xbox which comes complete with the manual and it is in pretty nice condition to be honest this one four quid from a store I ain't going to say no They're, again the original Xbox like the Wii at the moment the games are so cheap they are starting to rise a little bit for the older consoles that and kind of the PS2 um, but I certainly recommend if you can pick them up now while they're cheap it's definitely the time to do so um, before they kind of just go higher and higher which they inevitably will in the future and then the other game that I picked up from there it's one my friend um, picked up a Doncaster brought it over to me in a slip cover and says oh is this game any good and at that point I was thinking that he was asking me if it's any good so he could buy it and I was like yeah definitely let me get it he's like nah I've already got it mate so I'm thinking well why, why did you tell me that thanks buddy um, but yeah I picked up a copy of Fahrenheit and again it's complete with manual this is a game where around the time it came out everyone was absolutely raving about it I think the Tara game 9 out of 10 contender for the game of the year it says on the cover so you know it's got to be good um, I never actually got to play it unfortunately it goes in a long list of games that completely passed me by but now making an effort to come get some of these games and give them a go so really happy to pick that up and £4 I can't complain at all with that that's fantastic to have so yeah I could have spent an awful lot longer in sore thumbs I've got a lot more games but I just decided to pick up some sort of cheaper titles that I know that I'm definitely going to make some time to play and, um, and enjoy from there. And that's kind of a good way to do it. I mean, there are going to be some expensive titles that you shout out on um, that you really want, but if you can get some games that you'll really get some enjoyment out for a couple of quid, two, three or four quid, less than a fiver, that's fantastic. You can't go too far wrong. So yeah, that was my experience going to York and when I got back in between sort of decorating this, I decided to go to my local town and do a bit of a game hunt there. Um, from there, I managed to pick up, which I haven't got in here, um, from a charity shop, Mario Party on the DS for three quid. So I remembered I got that, but I'll put it in the other room. So I haven't got that to show you. So yeah, I take the word for that, unfortunately, because I'm an idiot. Um, <laughs> but shortly after that, that was probably the only thing I found in the charity shop, to be honest. I did go to Cash Converters and um, had a look at what games they've got in there. Um, now, I haven't really bought anything from Cash Converters before, at least the one up there. Um, but the prices are slightly better than CEX. And I know Cash Converters, if you do get a few games, you can have kind of a little like barter with them and they might knock some money off. But I only wanted one game they had in there. It's one I've seen other people pick up recently. Um, I got a copy of Thief on the Xbox One for one ninety nine. Really, really love the Thief series when it came out. It hasn't got a manual. I don't even know if it had one, to be honest. But the original Thief game, um, Thief Dark Project and Metal Age came out on the PC um, in, I think it's mid to late 90s. And... Fantastic games, really, really enjoyed them. The concept of them hadn't been done before, and they were both fantastic games. Had a lot of fun playing them with a friend. Um, even just to kind of watch him and play was just like so cool. Um, and the second one, the kind of um, where they had kind of machines and mechanics as well as kind of having the kind of medieval style thief setting was really cool. Um, I've seen some footage of this one, it looks like they tried to go very very dark with it it's made by Square Enix Eidos I don't really know what to expect whether I'll enjoy it too much but for one ninety nine, and to go with other Thief games I thought I'd definitely give it a go um, as well as that I popped into my uh, 
local, I say local, it's not that local, but my kind of chosen game shop um, up there in my local city. And it's quite tight, to be honest. It's a really kind of small shop. It's probably not much bigger than the game cupboard, to be honest. It's got kind of a front bit and then a back bit, but he's got glass cabinets and they've always got stuff in there that's really, really interesting. Even though he doesn't have tons and tons and tons of games like some game shops do, there's always going to be something to catch your eye, always something you're like, oh, I've not seen that before, or I've been looking for that. And the price is always really reasonable. Um, when I went in, there was another guy who's employed to fix some of the consoles. So I went in the back where the kind of Sega Saturn stuff was, and he was sitting on the floor fixing a load of Dreamcast. So I let him kind of get on, and I just had a look around some of the cabinets and just chatted in there for a while. Both shop owner and the guy working, both really nice guys, and I was just talking about games, which is fantastic. If you can find a good game shop, build up a relationship with the owner in there, um, they can set stuff aside for you. It's it's fantastic, and his prices are always really really reasonable. If they're not CEX, they're so slightly more. You can have a look at them. The manuals already been always be in there, and he does a really good job to make sure that they're really good saleable copies. Um, but I bought a couple of games from him when I went in there. Um, a couple of games that I've kind of been looking for. I bought one Saturn game. It didn't have an awful lot in at the time, um, but I really wanted to get some games for my Saturn seeing as I picked it up, and I haven't really got an awful lot for it at the moment. So the first one of the two games I picked up on him was Command & Conquer on the Sega Saturn. Now, this is in the case that is absolutely bulletproof and hard to open, but I have managed it. Um, and it's got manual on both discs in there, and it's in really, really nice condition, to be fair. I think I paid a tenner for this, maybe slightly more than CX, but if I have to take into account postage and whatever, because my local one won't have it, I'll be paying kind of 9.50 anyway, so for 50p more, to know that I'm getting a quality game, I ain't going to complain with that at all. And then the other game that I got from him, it's another original Xbox game, I've kind of got the bug of this a little bit at the moment, but it's one I saw at the car boot sale and I keep looking at and I think he wanted a couple of quid for it. Um, but the case was a bit ratty. When I had a look at the disc, it looks like it's got some kind of dirt or something kind of on it. And when you go to kind of rub it off, you realise it's not dirt at all. It's almost like somebody's had it with a scouring pad. It's the most bizarre situation. It's definitely not disc scratches or something like that. Whether it's been left out and just rubbed on the surface, I don't know. But... For the fact that he had it in the shop and he wanted four quid for it, again, it's in really nice order. I thought, I'm just going to buy it. So four quid, I finally got a copy of The Punisher on the original Xbox. It is complete with manual. As if it wasn't, I probably wouldn't have bought it. And yeah, in really, in a really nice condition. No idea what to expect from this, but Xbox Gamer gave it a star game. So it's got to be good. Because they didn't give Star Games to anything unless it was top notch. <laughs> but um, yeah, that was the bits I got from there. I then made my way into town and to the CEX that was there. Um, at this point, because I've been kind of messing around, I think I had about when I got into CEX and picked the games, I had about half an hour left in the car park and it took me 20 minutes to walk back there. And um, oh, I don't know why they do it, but they when there's a queue there's always just one person serving or they finish a queue and then I'm waiting there and then everyone just disappears I don't know why maybe I'm just unlucky but I was touch and go whether I was going to actually have a chance to get these or just have to say no forget it and I'll go back to the car but I managed to I managed to make it with maybe a couple of minutes to spare um, so I picked up three games from there all with my credit that I didn't spend on the other games first one I picked up was Metal Gear Solid 4 Guns of the Patriots Anniversary Edition. So I don't know if this is any different to the other Metal Gear Solid 4, which comes in the cardboard sleeve, but it is complete with the manual and it has got the poster, which I will open up to show you guys, which is really really crisp I don't think this has ever been opened but yeah 
very nice. They come to the poster. It's double sided as well. So it's got is that Snake and Big Boss or is that just Big Boss? I do not know, but that looks really nice. I'm gonna try and fold it up again without ruining it. <laughs> Easier said than done. So yeah, that cost me six quid. I think the original one is about two pounds, maybe two pound fifty, something like that. So I hope I haven't just paid like three pounds something for the poster, but it looked in really good condition, to be honest. Really nice case, which drew me to it. I haven't seen it before, so I thought I'd buy it. Because it's with CS credit, it's cost me probably about two pounds in normal money rather than CEX money. Translates right, this keeps going dim. Right, sort that out. So, the next game I got from there, I always have a look at the Wii games in CX because they normally turn up something that I haven't seen before, um, and it's normally a pretty reasonable price. So, I came across this, and yeah, not seen this before. I've not seen a Final Fantasy game on the Wii, um, whether or not it's because I haven't been paying attention, but it's £3.50 this one. Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles The Crystal Bearers which is really 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 not easy to say um, but it's complete with manual and disc in there the Crystal Chronicles I think got a bit of a hard deal because I don't know if they were not as good as the the other Final Fantasy games um, I know we're on the GameCube I've been told isn't very good but yeah for £3.50 happy to pick it up to go with the others and then the last one um, I got from there I got a game for the Sega Saturn it's not in the best condition if I'm completely honest with you um, it's Wipeout which it's got a rip there unfortunately where somebody's tried to remove the sticker um, it is in the older case which is cardboard ones which obviously start to go start to fall apart rather than the bulletproof one like down there um, I think it's just because of the sheer weight of the plastic against the cardboard makes it hang but the disc is in there it has got the manual it's got a stupid first pre-owned sticker on the, the manual but I really really like the Wipeout games really really good racers I kind of have them synonymous with PlayStation 1 when I think of PlayStation 1 I always think of the Wipeout games so probably didn't realize that it came out in the set at the time but really happy to have that and give it a go and you know happy to pick up some racing games to have on my saturn so that is everything that i got from my trip into the sea and that kind of brings me up to the car boot sales now one of them uh, the ones i've gone to got rained off the others have been not as good as previous weeks um the guy who I've met there at the car boot sale has absolutely killed it. He got a PS1 for £5 in box the other day and um, got a Game Boy Advance with about five games for three quid. Um, all good games, games like Pokemon Gold, Mario, Bomberman, which absolutely sucks to be honest because I'd be like to be the guy who got that, but I'm not going to begrudge anybody and it probably sucks more because I actually know that he's got them if I didn't know he had it then it probably wouldn't bother me whatsoever but I'm never going to begrudge somebody games and it's kind of nice to share in it but I want to get back into it and have a big old fight but nevertheless I have managed to pick up some decent stuff um, for pretty decent prices to be honest so I'm not going to complain too much about stuff um, First one I'm going to show you is one I picked up for 50p, which is Genji Day of the Blade. I don't think I had this in my last video. The graphics on it look really cool, which is what drew me to it. It's 50p I paid, and it even says on it actually, um, 2006 game of the year, um, best artistic design. So I don't doubt that. The game looks absolutely gorgeous from the artwork. 50p. I haven't got that many PS3 games, but I picked that up and I'll give it a go. Um, and at the same car boot sale, there was a guy who had a few PlayStation 2 games on the floor. Nothing really exciting to speak of. I think he had Vice City there, um, but 
I've already got it and I kind of left it behind. But there were three, three for a quid, same as DVDs. Um, there's only really one I wanted out of it or one I needed. So I picked up Ridge Racer 5 for the PlayStation 2. Um, it's complete with its manual. Ridge Racer kind of passed me by after Ridge Racer 1 and Ridge Racer 2. I really liked Ridge Racer in the arcade. There used to be one in our local arcade, which was one where you had the gears and you could change gears, steering wheel as well. You could. There was also a clutch for it, but I don't think you actually needed to use the clutch. I think it was just more for, you know, <laughs> just for having it there because it didn't do anything. But really enjoyed that. But that was my last experience of the Ridge Racers. I never played five, so for thirty p, it's a no-brainer. Really, I'm not leaving it behind. And then the last couple of car boot sales that I went to, um, these car boot sales, there was one which is a yearly one they do for a carnival that's nearby to us. And you can pay to go in early, pay a couple of quid, get in before everyone else. So I went in super early and see what games they've got. Now, it was bits and bobs here and there. It wasn't anything fantastic and most of it was for trade but I did get some games which I'll go through with you, mainly Xbox 360 titles. So the first store I came to was a guy who had DVDs and some 360 games mixed in with it. Um, asked him how much they were and he said he wanted a pound each for it. I picked up this one and because it had a damaged case, I had a bit of a um, barter and managed to get it for 50p. So for 50p, I got Marvel vs Capcom 3 on the original Xbox. So I'd probably swap out of the case to be honest, but Marvel vs Capcom games are pretty cool to have. Still got some kind of sticker on it. 40 quid new it says, and um, it's got a sticker on there, that's the back of it. But yeah, it's got a nasty kind of bit broken off in this corner here. But for 50p, I'll swap it out. It's got the Kami, Beautiful Joe, Captain America, Iron Man, Ryu, I think that's Chris Redfield. Yeah, Devil May Cry. Yeah, loads of things like that. So I don't think I have any other Marvel vs. Capcom, so I'm really happy to pick that one up for 50p. And um, also he had some other games. I think this one was in there as well. Um, so I picked up four more games, asked him what I'd do for it, and he did them for three quid. So I wasn't going to bar too much with him um, first thing in the morning. But I'm happy with these I got. So I picked up a copy of Quake 4 from him which is complete with manual, manual and disc, which don't trade for an awful lot, but I kind of bought that for me, to be honest, because I really like the Quake games. I think Arena was the last one I played millions of years ago when it came out. But yeah, happy with that. Next up, PC game, StarCraft, with the expansion pack from the best sellers range. So from Blizzard, before they did World of Warcraft, which I've never played StarCraft. It looks like a kind of Command and Conquer game, but it's a game of the year, a best selling game. It looks quite cool, to be honest with you, I'm not going to lie. Um, so I'm picking that up with the others, to be honest. I'm not going to turn that down. I actually saw it, the two individual games at a car boot, and they wanted three quid for it. So if I can get it for a quid in the pack, definitely going to do that. Uh, next up, Street Super Street Fighter 4. Another Capcom game. Again, complete with manual and disc. Like I said, these last four I got for three quid. And then the last one is Devil May Cry 4. Manual and disc. All of them came with disc and manual. They're all in pretty nice condition as well, to be honest. So I ain't going to complain at that. So yeah, from £3.50 I got five games off him, so pretty, pretty decent for that time in the morning. Uh, the next lady I came to who was unpacking had a box of games, and majority of these I just got for trade. But I asked how much each, and she wanted a pound each. I picked up three, I asked if she'd do two, and she wasn't having any of it. So I kind of went, well, okay, you kind of have to know that if you push your luck, you yeah, He's just going to walk away from it, to be honest. And I don't think these are too bad for what I got, to be honest. So I picked up a copy of The Sims 3 for trade. 
which has got in there the booklet and the disc, so it has got the code, so CX will take it. I think I'll almost get a couple of quid back on that, so that's not too bad at all. Next one I picked up from her, which I'm keeping, is Superstar Tennis, or Sega Superstar Tennis even, on a 360. So I've never been a massive tennis fan, to be fair, but I'm always for a bit of a fun game. So this has got Sama de Amigo, um, Monkey Ball, Space Channel 5, Sonic Robotnik, you can see there. It's got Choo Choo Rocket on the back. And do from Jesso Radio. So yeah, that was a pound. I'm keeping that one for me. And the game that I purely got in for trade, to be honest, because I can make a few quid on it. It's a Batman 3 Lego Batman on the 360. This one doesn't come with manual, unfortunately. But that will be going to see yes. And then I've got a few more bits in this car boot. I'll bundle the others together into one, but um Last few games I got were Wii games. Um, these are 50p each, except one which I paid 20p for. So the 20p one I got was Peppa Pig. And the reason this I got for 20p is because the disc is in a bit of a state, to be honest. Um, I think she said something got spilt on it. Like, you're not kidding. Um, there's so many fingerprints over this. It won't, probably won't even reflect back. It's... Oh, can't even show you it's filthy. It's got kind of a weird kind of film around it that you can't see. Um, whether or not it will work or not, I don't know. But I'll give it a wash, see if CX will take it, because I think it trades in for about four quid um, when I checked. These ones I picked up with 50p each. I got Mario Sonic at the Winter Olympics. Always good to pick up Mario games. And... Mario Sonic Olympic games are pretty cool to be honest. I can't complain at that. I think I already have this one, so I think that this one's going to be going for CX just because I already have it in my collection. But yeah, that was 50p. And the last one I picked up, which I've kind of looked around for and haven't seen it at a decent price, got it for 50p. Um, whether or not I keep it or not, I don't know. I think it comes down to whether I'll play it, um, which is unlikely. But I picked up a copy of Toy Story 3 on the we which is complete with manual which is always nice to have in these so yeah 50p for that not going to turn down games at 50p at all it's like people say what can you get for 50p these days 50p buys you a couple of games well a game happy days happy days with that um and then the last few bits i got from the car boots, I bundled these together because there was really nothing between the two car boots. I got very, very little. But what I did get, I got for trade, I got a Blu ray of Blade Runner 2049, which hasn't even been opened, which I paid two quid for, and I can trade in for four. So it's a bit of a no brainer. I picked up two games for a pound each which I wanted to get for a while, but when I go to CX, the copies are in really, really poor order. So I picked up Dragon Age Origins, which is complete with manual. There's this is underneath there. It's got a little Brucey bonus being, what is this? Bound in stone, shale and unstoppable warrior created by dwarves to battle the darkspawn, obviously. And um, an armor for Mass Effect 2, which I haven't played any of the Mass Effect games. But a nice little bonus to have. Thank you very much. And then I've got Dragon Age 2. If you're going to get Dragon Age 1, you might as well buy Dragon Age 2 if the person has it. Which is complete with manual and disc. Nice. Hadn't got the expansion to Dragon Age Origins, unfortunately. They didn't have it. They had got it in CX, but I wasn't going to buy it without getting Origins. So I still have that to find. But I might get lucky at Booter one day. And the last two bits I had was from DVD Guys. So there's always at every car boot sale. Well, at least there is at my car boot sale. Maybe not ours. There's a guy who just brings in shed loads of DVDs every week. And um, occasionally, very occasionally, he has a few games in there. And 
this was the exception. I normally don't even bother going to it. I normally leave him till last because he's on the first row, first stall. Everyone bundles in there. He normally clears out quite early. Um, if he does have any games, they're normally not great titles. But had a few this week, so I got right in there. So I had a GameCube game for £1.50. You don't see GameCube games at car boot sales very often. Certainly not my way. But for £1.50, I got Die Hard Vendetta on the GameCube. Whether I have this on another console, I'm not sure. But com complete with manual and disc. £1.50, I think, is probably what CEX charged for it. But yeah, nice to have it. My CEX yeah. certainly doesn't. And the last game I picked up was one that I've kind of said that if I see out and about, I will pick up. I never really see it. And this I got for cheaper than what CEX would trade it in for. So even if I get it and I don't like it, I can always get my money back. But I picked up a copy of Witcher 3, which comes in a lovely slipcase. We all love slipcases. And yeah, in there with its manual, all in really good condition to have the manual. And I think it's got a map. I think this is a map. Oh, stickers. Didn't know it has stickers. Hold the phone. Yeah, oh, it's a map or a poster. Oh, look at that. Very nice. Two maps in one week. Can't be that. And some weird kind of ad uh, advert for CG Project Red. Well, they can't spell project, but they put a K in it to sound cool. Yeah, I don't get it. But yeah, that cost me a fiver. So I'm very happy to have picked that up because it's a game that I've been saying if I see it for a while that I'll pick it up um, and give it a go. I haven't really got that many Xbox One games, so that's been recommended to me a lot. I'll definitely enjoy playing it. And that is my mammoth pickup bundle, guys. I'm glad you stayed with me to the end if you have. If you're returning to the channel, thanks very much for coming back. I'm going to be putting out more content than this, and I've got loads of things to catch up on. So in the coming weeks, there will be some more stuff. If you're new to the channel, thanks very much for coming and watching the video. Um, if you can remember, and like and subscribe to me. And if you ring the bell for notifications, it will let you know when I'm uploading or when I'm putting out a new video. Um, anyway, that's it for this time, guys. Thanks very much for watching. And I'll see you all soon. Take care. Bye-bye.